Today, I will demonstrate how we can fine tune a large language model like GPT-2 with our own text documents. Why will we need fine tuning an LLM? LLMs are generally trained on public data with no specific focus. Fine tuning is a crucial step that adapts a pre trained LLM model to a specific task, enhancing the LLM responses significantly. Although text generation is a well known application of GPT 2, the neural network embeddings obtained from the model are equally valuable for various downstream applications. Today, we will see how we can fine tune GPT 2 with our documents, then, we will generate text using the fine tuning model. After that, we will retrieve embeddings of any text we desire. GPT-2 is free. It is a good resource for research, practice, and non-critical applications. Let's get started with the code. First, we assure the availability of a GPU for training, which is essential for handling the computational load of GPT-2. CPU will work too, but it will be slow. I have a directory of text files. These are my training files. I only have three files here. I could have thousands of files. I want the GPT-2 model to be fine-tuned with these documents. The GPT-2 model has its past knowledge from internet resources. That is why we call it a pre-trained model. On top of that pre-trained model, we want to add more knowledge to the model using our own text documents. In this part of the code, I consolidate all the documents I want to use for the fine-tuning into a single file for convenience. Next, I load the pre-trained GPT-2 model and its tokenizer. In this example, we are using GPT-2 medium variant. The smaller model will be faster with a sacrifice in quality of responses, and the larger models will be slower and possibly better. Here in the comments of the code, I have written what text argument you need for your desired model size. I set a padding token to assure consistent sequence lengths. We now define a custom dataset class to handle our data and implement the necessary methods for a PyTorch dataset. The custom dataset class helps load our data from the consolidated text file and do all the tokenizations of the training text. Data collator with padding is used to dynamically pad batched data to the maximum sequence length in a batch. It pads each batch to the length of the longest sequence in that batch, saving processing complexities. By passing the tokenizer to data collator with padding, you assure that padding is done correctly according to the tokenizer's setting. This is especially useful in training or evaluation loops where the data needs to be batched and padded for processing by the model. I set up the training arguments here. Why am I using a large number of epochs in fine-tuning the LLM? For the LLM to grasp, learn, and prioritize this small data over the LLM's existing knowledge, I am using a large number of epochs. If my training dataset were large, like if I had thousands of documents, the LLM could get enough information from the data to learn well. With small data, the LLM needs to learn through a lot of epochs. If we run the fine-tuning process for two or three epochs, and if you only have two or three training documents, each containing around 100 words, then this small data will not scratch the surface of the LLM. We need more epochs to make sure that the model recognizes our small data. By the way, an epoch refers to one complete pass through the entire training dataset. During an epoch, the model's parameters are updated to minimize the loss function. Multiple epochs are usually necessary to train the model adequately. Each epoch consists of several iterations, with each iteration being a single batch of data being passed through the model, and the model parameters being updated based on the loss calculated from that batch. Using the training data, I set up the trainer instance for fine-tuning the pre-trained model. 
this line kicks off the training process. Now we have our GPT-2 model fine-tuned. You should save the model to a file, reload it and reuse it whenever required. I am not doing that because I fine-tuned the model with only three small text documents. So the combined text was small. The fine-tuning training time for all 400 epochs was less than two minutes. So I am not saving the fine-tuned model in a file. Now we have our fine-tuned model. We can use it for text generation or embedding generation. Let us generate text against a prompt. GPT-2 models text generation works by predicting the next word. So if we provide a prompt, it will try to put words after the provided text in the prompt. In the training that I provided, there is a character named Igor Kolokov. I write my prompt asking who is Igor Kolokov. I retrieve corresponding tokens for the prompt. The attention mask is used to indicate which tokens are actual data and which are padding, so that the model doesn't focus on padding tokens when making predictions. In this line, attention mask is generated by passing prompt text through the tokenizer, creating a mask identifying where actual tokens are in the input. We move the prompt elements to the appropriate device, in my case, to the GPU. Then we call the model's generate method with some arguments. We use our tokenizer to decode the output generated by our fine-tuned model. We have the generated text. We print it. The model said who is Kolokov correctly. This is amazing. But I must warn you that GPT-2 is not as great as GPT-3 or GPT-4. The GPT-2 model seems to hallucinate and provide incorrect responses quite often. Anyway, we wanted to fine-tune GPT-2 and it is fine-tuned. You can fine-tune it with your documents. Make sure that you have many documents to expect a reasonable response. It is time to talk about how to retrieve embedding vectors from our fine-tuned GPT-2 model.